Today we're going to talk about the method I use to test sleeping bags. I'll talk about this right here. So many of you have asked how exactly do I go about testing a sleeping bag. Now there's a lot of different things I do. The one thing that gains the most attention is the temperature inside the bag. Now the temperature inside the bag is definitely important and when you do it properly you can definitely see a difference between each bag and that is really interesting. So for your method to be repeatable you have to use certified equipment. I have switched over to using this Elitech RC5 Plus. This has the external uh, thermometer probe. So what I do with this is I just tape it on to uh, whatever I'm wearing that day at the test. Tape it on there and then this part actually comes off and it plugs in your computer with the USB and it logs the data. So I can hit this, start it. <clears throat> so I put it in here, I get in the bag. Before I zip it up all the way, I turn this on. Stow it away, wait 45 minutes, you know, zip it up, wait 45 minutes, turn it off. And then in my calculations, what I do is I just um, take a minute off the front end and 30 seconds off the back end because on the front end, I gotta get in the bag and I have to adjust you know, the, the pools and everything like that. On the back end, I gotta get out of the bag to get to this to see that it's turned off as far as the logging goes. So this logs every 10 seconds. It's a certified thermometer, which is actually used in a lot of refrigeration uh, and freezer settings in the food industry. So this is very uh, good and it actually prints out a report. So in this report, I got a graph, and then it has every 10 seconds, it shows me the uh, temperature. So I can go down through here and get my readings every five minutes, up to 45 minutes. That's one thing I do. What's the inside temperature of the bag? That's one test I do, and that's the one that gains the most attention because not really anyone is doing it. Besides that, for that test, I have to wear the exact same clothes, and I have to do the exact same protocol. So. Uh, I stand outside for five minutes, I take the bag outside with me, I stand out there for five minutes, and this morning at 3 a.m. I got up just so I can get the right temperatures uh, to test these zero degree bags, and standing outside in like five degree weather with just like what you would wear normally in a sleeping bag, not overly dressed, kind of sucks, but uh, I'll do that, and then I get into the bag and do exactly what I just said, so um, it has to be repeatable, so all the bags are in the same place in the house before I go outside. They all go outside, they all wait five minutes along with me, um, and then I do the exact same test. So it's repeatable and a lot of data which is certified through that thermometer. Another part of the test is just getting in the bag and seeing how comfortable it is. You know, they have all these different ways you can zip them up. Uh, there's a front zipper, either a side zipper, some, you know, have collars, draft collars that are adjustable, some don't. How does it feel? Is it short? Is it not as wide as you'd think? Um, you know, all that stuff kind of goes into the sleeping bag review as well. On top of that, actually going out and using it in the field and seeing how it performs. Now, when I get down to a zero degree bag, uh, I wear a neck gaiter, whatever you want to call it. And this one, I'll put a link down below. This one right here from Smartwool is awesome. It has little perforations right here so you can breathe out. You don't get frost because you have a solid neck gaiter. This is one that has perforations right here. Uh, where your mouth is and then you just simply put it on and breathe and it's not going to get frosted and, and whatever if you just have your mouth covered. Note to self, don't put your mouth inside your sleeping bag and try and uh, you know you think that's going to keep you warm or whatever. Put a gator on, make sure that your mouth and nose are outside of the sleeping bag. You don't want condensation and stuff in there. Um, and honestly I, I would highly recommend this. This is probably one of my favorite purchases got this a few years ago and it really rocks for me, especially in a sleeping bag because you want to keep your mouth and nose out. If it has a DWR coating, I like to pour water on it and see if it soaks through or not. That's one thing that's very important for untreated down uh, sleeping bags is if you're going to have it soak through, it's going to get the down wet and then if it gets saturated, you could have potentially have a problem. So that's another test I do. If they're saying it has a DWR, we're gonna check to make sure that it beads up when you put water on the outside of the sleeping bag. So that's how I test. Um, I went out this morning, tested four bags, Thermarest, two mountain of hardware, and a Volantre. Uh, the Volantre was a five degree bag, so it wasn't rated as, as uh, low as the other three, and it performed better than the most expensive bag um, in the entire sleeping bag testing that we'll be doing. The Volantre 5 degree beat a 0 degree 
that uh, is the most expensive that I have. So I thought that was interesting. So stay tuned to check out the results. I'm gonna have them coming out. Uh, I did a Mountain Hardware Phantom, Mountain Hardware Bishop Pass, the Volantre Bloody Mary, and a Thermarest Parsec. One of them really stood out. One of them stood out in not a good way. And two of them were pretty good. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested in anything else, put down below what companies you're interested in. I do have requests out to some other companies to uh, get sleeping bags so I can test against each of them. Uh, right now I have uh, Kelty, Thermarest, Mountain Hardware, uh, Fallen Tray, Kelty, uh, Eastern Mountain Sports, Vital Outdoors, Eddie Bauer, might be another one. But I have a very wide array of different prices and different weights and different performances, uh, different ratings. So the one thing I do like to do is get uh, around a 20 degree bag and around a zero degree bag and see, you know, what are the differences with the company sometimes. Uh, you'll see a difference. So like Kelty, for instance, I might recommend their 20 degree because of the weight and the warmth, etc. But their zero degree is very heavy. So I don't know if I'm going to recommend that for backpacking. So. It's interesting that they're 20 degree, you could probably take backpacking, but their zero degree is just really heavy and probably can't do that. So those are little things that you find when you actually get stuff in and get it in your hands and uh, check it out. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Put down below what companies you want to see. And until next time.